Father, we join uh, together tonight and just remember what an amazing thing it is to have the love of God through the blood of Christ shed on that cross. And that that lamb now sits at the right hand, not just as a lamb that was slain, but Father, as the ruler of all creation. And we're grateful that we are a part of that. And we're grateful that we're entering into a season where we can remember not just that sacrifice, but what it means to walk in sacrifice, what it means to walk in service to you, all because you love us and loved us first. So, Father, I pray that it would be your spirit that allows us to step beyond the tiredness of the day, step beyond the concerns of the day, and enter into this time where we are here for you to accomplish what you have for us, not just to put our love on display for you, but for one another as well. So I'm grateful for the folks who have come tonight to be a part of that love and to be a part of what you want to do with us. So bless us, I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Higher ground. We, uh, I was just going through the music again, and as I was looking at the opening line, I'm pressing on the upward way. Um, reminds me of, I think one of the think, one of the passages in the Old Testament in the Minor Prophets, which I don't know well, but one of the ones that really stand out to me is Hosea, simply because of the circumstances of his life, and. Um, as you probably know, in being a prophet to Israel, who at that point, as part of a divided kingdom from Judah, uh, was looking to make alliances with anybody they could, uh, specifically Assyria, who eventually took them over. But uh, so be careful who you try to ally yourself with. But um, the whole problem was is that Israel had kind of turned away from worshiping the Lord and were kind of going after idols. Um, at the end of chapter 5 in Hosea, God says this, I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face and in their distress earnestly seek me. And it's interesting to think I'm going to return to a place as if he was, the, the idea being I'm just going to withdraw from what they know as my presence. God is everywhere, so he doesn't return anywhere. He's always there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> with that in mind, um, D.A. Carson says, if God's presence is terrifying, his absence is even worse. And I think that's probably the worst part of hell itself, God's absence. Void of love, beauty, light, glory, compassion, mercy, grace, Everything that is him, peace, rest, it's gone. So Hosea says to Israel at the beginning of chapter 6, uh, I think one of the most beautiful passages in, in the Old Testament in a lot of ways. He says, come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us that he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. It's interesting because I think part of returning the Lord has to, everything to do with believing as you're coming to him that he is not only the one who tears down but the one who lifts back up. He is, the, he is sovereign over all those circumstances in your life, the worst circumstances of your life. But it says here, he has torn us that he may heal us. There's a lot of ways that God wants to heal us. It's not just physically. A lot of ways he wants to heal us emotionally and spiritually. And sometimes he can only do that by taking you through the hardest of times. So God admits it through the prophet. He has torn us that he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. He does it with the intent to be merciful. And then it goes on to say, after two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up. But this is one of the few Old Testament scriptures that already are, you know, proclaiming on the third day Jesus would rise, that we may live before him. 
And here it is in verse 3. So let us know. And then he says again, let us press on to know the Lord. His going out as sure as the dawn, he will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. We're right in the middle of all that, aren't we? The spring rains that water the earth. But let us know. And then he repeats it. Let us press on to know. It's not just let us know, but let's, let's press into that, right? Um, and what that really says to me is, is we need to have an intimate relationship with God. He wants us to press into knowing him. And, and in the Old Testament, that's, that's a very intimate term, as a man knows his wife, as you understand that term. And it really, he had even admitted that to begin with in Hosea 2, and he said, And in that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me my Paul. And I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. That's intimacy. And that's what we're being called to, to press on to know the Lord. To, and the word obviously just means to pursue, to come after. And interestingly enough, Psalm 23 that says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That word follow, same word as pursue, as press on. Which means God is pressing on, following you. His mercy is pressing on to follow you all the days of your life. That's what we're being called to do in that same way. Proverbs 15, 9 says, The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who pursues righteousness. Same word, pursues. And that's the same relationship that the Apostle Paul continually urges in his writing when he says, press on, press on to know the Lord. And it's an interesting word because Paul uses the same word to describe how he persecuted the early church. He pressed into trying to persecute them. Now he's saying, press on to know and love God. I love it. Only God can change a heart like that. Only God could make that change in somebody. And that's why he writes in Philippians 3, forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. And in Ephesians 3, he said that we would know the love of God. So when we sing this song, I'm pressing on the upward way, it seems very light-hearted. It seems very kind of almost militaristic to a certain extent. But the depth of what those words mean and the depth of what God does to even show us what those words mean by following us in his mercy and in his kindness all the days of our lives. I hope would maybe just undergird a little bit of this because again, just as Hosea said, even though it is God who has torn us, he may heal us. The men's verse on page seven, when life's song of joy has ceased, and from despair, I seek release. There it is again. I'll tune my ear to the spirit sound and always choose the higher ground. The higher ground is where God is, right? If you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. That's what, that's what Colossians 3 starts with. That's what we want to start with. So let's start with that song, and let's just let it kind of carry us as we warm up with it a little bit and enjoy a little bit more sense of what it means to press on as God has called us to. All right, here we go. Let's stand up. Two, three. Four. 